Hello again and welcome to another edition of Seth and Country, my friends. Welcome to the show. I'm Herb Seth and host of the show. Pauline's here with me. Welcome to Southern Country. Thank you, Herb. It's a pleasure to be back hosting another show with you here in New York City for Fleet Week. It doesn't get better in New York City. It doesn't oh. get better in Fleet Week. <laughs> oh. Who's our gentleman standing next to us here and uh, talk to us about Fleet Week and the ship that we're on? Okay, well, this is Ensign Wittig, and yes, he is going to tell us what ship we're on and a little bit about Fleet Week. Well, great. Well, thanks so much. Fleet Week is a great tradition of the Navy. We've been doing it for 21 years this year. And uh, it's a great tradition, and it allows us, for the Navy, to tell our story, for the great people of New York to come and see what we're all about, what our mission is, and for our sailors to get some well-deserved liberty in one of the best cities on Earth. So, right. And we're right here, we're on the USS Iwo Jima, an amphibious assault craft. Okay, thank you. And I understand the down, downstairs below us uh, is filled with a lot of military vehicles. Can you tell us a little bit about what we're going to be seeing downstairs? Absolutely. Downstairs belongs to the Marines. We'll be seeing all their equipment, their weapons, their assault vehicles, landing craft, almost everything they have in their inventory on this ship is downstairs. So it'll be a great thing to see. All right, great. Well, we are certainly looking forward to our Absolutely. day here. And hey, her what we're going to do, we're going to walk around, find out what's going on here. Well, my friends, I'm standing next to Lieutenant Colonel Spang. Welcome to Southern Country, sir. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure having you on the show. Oh, it's a pleasure to uh, be here. What's surrounding me here? What is this? This is called the AV-8B uh, Harrier 2 Plus. It's the uh, only vertical takeoff and landing capable uh, aircraft in the Marine Corps and Navy. That's why we're on board this ship with the other helicopters. What's vertical and whatever you just said? That means we can take off and land like this and then accelerate out. Come back in for landing, stop in the air, and then land. What gives you the up power? That's one great big Pegasus motor, and they're built by Rolls-Royce, producing 24,000 pounds of thrust. 24,000 pounds of thrust. That's a lot of thrust. That's a lot of thrust. That, how much does this thing weigh? Uh, the airplane itself weighs about 16,000 pounds. And how high will it go before it has to go off? As high as I want it to. No kidding. That's right. I thought you'd only lift it like a two feet or three well, feet off and then it just took off. Typically, we want to just uh, get about 50 feet in the air and then start accelerating out. Cause... How fast does it take to get that 50 feet up? How long on a, on a time wise? Oh, just a couple seconds. Get out. Now, how fast does this thing go in the air? I can get it up to Mach 1 if I want. Speed of sound. Holy man. You're Five. really moving. Absolutely. 585 knots. Wow. That's moving. You, how long did it take to train to run this thing? Well, once you have your pilot's wings, it takes it takes about uh, two and a half, three years to get your wings, but then another six months to a year after that to learn how to fly this particular airplane. So a lot of money invested. You're minutes. proficient on this plane? 17 years of flying. <laughs> That's enough. That's enough. Thank you for being on Southern Country. You're welcome. Pleasure having you on the show. All right. Now I'm standing next to this fine Marine, Captain Webb. It's a pleasure to have you on the show this afternoon. It's a and to be here. Thank you. And uh, next to us, we have the Offspray, and Captain Webb is going to tell us a little bit about the Offspray. All right. The uh, V-22 Offspray is a medium lift capable assault platform that uh, we've taken to Iraq. It's deployed successfully. Uh, it's a tilt rotor aircraft, so it uh, takes off like a helicopter and uh, flies like an airplane. And when it's time to land, we turn back into a helicopter and, and land safely on the deck. Okay. I understand you gave it a nickname, the Transformer. Is that correct? We like to call it that. It's a, a little bit easier to understand for people when they, they've seen the movie. Uh, and it, it's like a real life transform because it changes from a helicopter to uh, uh, an airplane and then successfully turns back into a helicopter again to land. Okay, great. Thank you. And how long has the Marine Corps been flying the Offspray? Uh, we've had three operational units deployed. Uh, so they've been deployed uh, over to Iraq for roughly the last 18, 19 months. Uh, the last squadron just came home successfully uh, about a month ago. And uh, they were uh, extremely effective over there at. Uh, you know, moving troops and cargo around and uh, respawning the troops in the field, getting done uh, everything they needed to get done without uh, any mission failures. All right, thank you. Captain Webb, I also understand there's a special feature on the Offspray, which is the mid-air uh, refueling system. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, ma'am. There's a lot of uh, very special features about this aircraft, but one of them is the air refueling capabilities. Uh, with the air refueling uh, capability, we're allowed to, uh, we can refuel, and so we can basically self-deploy anywhere in the world. We can depart from North Carolina and be, uh, you know, overseas in eight or nine hours with, uh, with, you know, C-130 support, and uh, we can take all of our troops and stuff with us to get us where we need to go, and uh, allows us to ex definitely extend our combat radius as well as uh, support the Marines once they get further out. So once we've deployed them out into the objective areas, uh, 
we can stay on station, support them with whatever they need, whether it's a resupply or if we need to pick them up again and take them home. Okay, great. Well, you have a cool job. This yes, is I do. <laughs> fantastic. All right, you're ready to get even cooler. Let's put our glasses on together. Ready? All right, don't we look cool now? <laughs> All right, I'm here with uh, Lieutenant Barnhart, and behind us we have a Seahawk, and Lieutenant Barnhart is going to tell us a little bit about the Seahawk. Yes, ma'am, this is a Navy's MH-60 Sierra helicopter, one of the newest helicopters in the Navy's inventory. Uh, it's been in use for about 10 years. It's a multi-mission helicopter, uh, commonly based on amphibious assault ships like the uh, U.S. Iwo Jima here. Um, top speed of about 180 knots, and a crew of normally four people, two pilots, a uh, rescue swimmer, and a uh, crew chief and then uh, additional personnel as needed for the mission. A uh, rescue swimmer, that's kind of uh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about yeah. the rescue it's, swimmer. It's one of our more interesting missions, definitely one of the more uh, rewarding missions. Uh, search and rescue, medevac, and uh, humanitarian relief are some of the more rewarding missions that we get to do. Um, should one of the aviators go down off the ship or uh, a vessel be in distress, we'll be the ones at uh, open ocean that will go try and, uh, try and help them out as much as we can. All right. I noticed, uh, Lieutenant, that it's all folded up. Um, how quickly can it unfold and uh, be ready for uh, transportation? Sure. Yeah, we could. Uh, we could get it. Definitely get it unfolded and airborne in a hurry. I would say less than uh, less than 20 minutes to get it airborne if we had to. Um, that's primary, one of the primary differences between the uh, Navy uh, MH-60 Sierra and the, uh, the Army's Black Hawk. Um, it's able to fold for uh, shipboard use, whereas the Army helicopters don't have that uh, folding capability. But it's very similar to uh, Army Black Hawk. All right. Well, it's very impressive, that's for sure. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the auto rotation? The auto rotation, yeah. That's, uh, I guess, that's the black magic of uh, helicopters. Uh, should we lose an engine, uh, basically auto rotate the helicopter down, which uh, calls for reducing the collective. It's called, which reduces the pitch on the blades and it the reverses the airflow up through the rotor system to uh, kind of auto propel it to the ground. Um, not something that I really want to try, but uh, we train for it quite often, so should it come to that, hopefully uh, hopefully we could execute it properly. Okay, well I have to say, you know your stuff. I was testing you, and you passed, so great job. All yeah. right, well it's been a pleasure talking yeah, with you and learning, uh, learning more about the Seahawk. Thank you very much. Well, my friends, we're going to find out about the Iwo Jima right now. Petty Officer Robert Moon's with me. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Okay. Now, talk to me about this, this boat that we're on. Is it we call it a boat or a ship? A ship. Tip. There you go. That's it. That's it. Uh, it's a fairly big ship. Well, we carry about 3,000 uh, crew members on board, 1,200 sailors, and about uh, 20 or 1,800 Marines when we uh, deploy. That's a bunch of people. Yes, sir. How, how many people does it take to make this thing run? It, it takes every single one of us. Uh, all 1,200 sailors to, to make the ship go, and then our combat element is the Marines. That's what I thought. How much butter do you use? To, how, much, how many people butter their bread in the morning here? Uh, I'd say all 3,000 of them do. <laughs> I bet you crack, they crack a lot of eggs down in that kitchen. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. What else do we do here on this ship? Uh, we're an amphibious dock ship, so yeah. our, our primary mission is to uh, take the Marines and let them go out and do their missions. Well, we have our uh, Harriers and our Helos up top side, our aircraft, and then down below we have our uh, LCACs, which carry the Marines' uh, heavy combat equipment, their tanks and trucks and so forth. How long did this go out without coming back? Uh, the longest deployment we've made so far is seven months. Wow. Not seeing anything, just deployment, huh? Yes. I mean, we stopped in a few places overseas, but yeah, before we came back home, it was seven months. Wow, that's a long time to be out there. Yes, it is. Yeah. Now, where, now, where'd that seven months take you? All around the world? Uh, primarily through the Mediterranean Sea and the Persian Gulf. This ship was in a wars? Uh, we've never been in an actual war, but we have done a few uh, non-combatant evacuations in uh, Lebanon a few years ago. Uh, we were also part of the uh, Katrina relief efforts down in uh, New Orleans a couple years ago. You guys were down for that, huh? Yes, sir. Ships, how old is this ship? Uh, it's about nine years old. It, it for new. Ten years ago, and, but it's been commissioned about nine years. Well, I want to thank you very much for all the details. Thank you. Glad to have you on the show, sir. Appreciate it. All right, so we've been making our way around the Iwo Jima, and I'm on top of this tanker uh, with two fine Marines, and I have Corporal Green here with us, and uh, Doc, he's just going by Doc today. So, uh, Corporal Green, tell us a little bit about this tank that we're on. Um, actually, this tank right here itself, it weighs about 70 tons, uh, fully combat loaded. It goes about from zero to 20 in about six seconds. It's uh, it's got a single uh, single jet turbine engine, 
Uh, it's got four four uh, four ways to fire uh, weapons. It's got uh, the 120 millimeter main gun, which is every, what everybody hears about. The coaxially mounted machine gun, 7.62 millimeter. The 50 caliber machine gun, and also another an extra 7.62 machine gun itself. Okay. Tell me, where has this tank been? Uh, this tank itself, it, it, it has come up from Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Whether uh, the actual history of the tank, I can't really tell you, but I know where it comes from originally. Um, it comes from where our, uh, where we are stationed, which is Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. We are part of Second Tank Battalion. There are only two tank battalions um, that are active currently in the Marine Corps, and this is uh, one of them right here. Okay, thank you. And um, Corporal Green, if you could tell us how many men and women does it take to operate such a tank? It takes four uh, four Marines to take uh, to operate this machine itself. Just, uh, just four. Yes, you have a uh, you have a tank commander who gives the fire commands, uh, a loader who loads the the uh, tank. Tank projectiles that are located down there. Um, you have a gunner who traverses the main gun itself, and then you have the. I, I got tank commander, loader, driver, uh, driver, and gunner. Uh, yeah, that, All right. So it's those four right there. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. That's a lot of information you provided for us for the show. Thank you. And uh, you're doing a fine job sitting there. <laughs> Do you want to say at least hello to the folks out here? Hi. <laughs> He's so shy. I've never met a shy Marine, but here's one of them. So, folks, well, thank you again. It's a pleasure having you on the show.